The headless way is simply to see who you are without the story of a person. Douglas Harding on having no head, Zen and the rediscovery of the obvious. Douglas Harding must be read in the first person sense. The man was not claiming to have been literally decapitated. From a first person point of view, his emphasis on headlessness is a stroke of genius that offers an unusually clear description of what it's like to glimpse the non-duality of consciousness. Sam Harris, Waking Up, A Guide to Spirituality Without Religion There is nothing above my shoulders but the evening. Shri Adi Dasamraj Introduction You do not have a head. This statement seemed ridiculous, verging on the insane. Of course you say, I have a head. I can see it in the mirror. I can take my hands and feel it right now. It seems so obvious. And yet, Douglas Harding, who lived into his 90s, spent his entire life instructing people on how to see the utterly obvious fact that they do not have a head. Harding said that once this fact is seen, that we have no head, then we, at the same time, have the most profound insight into our true nature, non-duality, or what many mystical and religious traditions call enlightenment. Douglas Harding was in his mid-thirties and living in India, looking out over the Himalayas, when he first realized that he could not find his head. Instead, where he thought his head should be, he found a boundless field of awareness. This awareness was utterly inclusive and not limited to the boundaries of his body. This was not something that he had developed or achieved. It was rather merely the seeing of what was completely obvious and always already the case. It was, to quote Harding, to experience oneself at the zero point, to see clearly what one truly is, open, boundlessly inclusive, empty, awareness. This insight had a profound impact on Harding and led him to write books and develop practical exercises to help people to realize their own headlessness and see what is actually above their shoulders. Nothing whatsoever. Life, teaching and no head exercises. Douglas Harding was an architect who worked in London and later in India during World War II. It was while in the Indian Himalayas that he had his first no-head experience. In this first experience of headlessness, Harding described it as absurdly simple and unspectacular. He stopped thinking, and an alertness came over him. His reason and chatter slowed or completely stopped. Past and future fell away. He forgot who he was, his name, and everything that he called mine. He felt new, mindless, free of all memory. There existed only the now. What was present and what was given in it. The look was enough to bring this experience about. When he looked down his legs, he saw khaki trousers that stopped in a pair of brown shoes, khaki sleeves terminating in a pair of hands, and when he looked at his khaki shirt front, he saw it terminating above the shoulders in absolutely nothing whatsoever, certainly not a head. Harding would go on to write many books and teach his headless exercises or experiments. He develops many simple experiments to bring about not merely the understanding, but the experience of there being no experiencer. These experiments were designed to challenge the individual's preconceived notions of the self and encourage a shift in perspective. One of the most famous exercises was the view from behind, where the individual would look at the back of their own head to see that there is no self separate from the rest of the world. Other exercises included looking at one's hands, feet, and shadow to see that they are not separate from the rest of existence. He describes these experiments as making easily available the experience of who you really are. Who you really are according to Harding, is no thing and everything. But you should test these claims out for yourself and depend on no other person. As he became more well-known, 
Harding strongly rejected any attempt to make him into a guru of any type. Rather, he said, all I do is point people back to themselves. Once people see and experience their own headlessness, there is no need for a teacher or guru. And indeed, the mediation cannot be done wrongly or badly. Douglas Harding's most well-known book is On Having No Head, Zen and the Rediscovery of the Obvious, first published in 1961. The book presents Harding's philosophy on self-discovery and the nature of reality, which was influenced by Eastern spiritual traditions, particularly Zen Buddhism. In On Having No Head, Harding argues that the conventional view of the self as an entity with a head is a false perception, and that true self-discovery requires a radical rethinking of the self. He presents the idea that the self is not an entity separate from the world around us, but rather an integral part of the universe. This understanding leads to the experience of what Harding calls headlessness, or the realization that there is no separate self, but rather a profound interconnectedness with all of existence. In this book, Harding instructs readers on how to reproduce the experience of headlessness that he had spontaneously in the Himalayas. The primary point that he makes in the books is that there is no separate self inhabiting your consciousness, nor is there an experiencer of your experience. In the book, he shares a self-portrait he discovered in Ernst Mach's book, The Analysis of Sensations. This drawing is called View from the Left Eye. It was this drawing that inspired Douglas Harding to first notice his own headlessness. We can see the room, the legs, the hand, some of the body, the side of the nose, etc. But what is seeing? From what are we seeing? Later, Harding would develop a finger-pointing exercise based on this drawing. The finger-pointing exercise is a simple but powerful contemplative practice that can help you to directly experience your headlessness or true nature. The exercise involves directing your attention to your own awareness and the space in which everything appears. These are the instructions for the exercise that Douglas Harding suggested. It is also good if you can keep in mind the drawing, view from the left eye, that inspire the exercise. 1. Sit comfortably in a quiet place with your eyes open. 2. Hold your hand out in front of you, with your index finger pointing straight up. 3. Focus your attention on the finger and notice its shape, color and texture. 4. Now, shift your attention to the space around the finger. Notice the empty space that the finger is pointing to. 5. Become aware of the fact that you are aware of the finger and the space around it. Notice the I am awareness that is present. 6. Now, bring your attention to your head and notice the space that your head occupies. Become aware that the space inside your head is the same as the space outside of it. 7. Next, imagine that your head is transparent and that you can see through it. Notice that what you see when you look out from your head is the same as what you see when you look in at your head. 8. Finally, become aware that you are the awareness that is present in all of this. The finger, the space, your head and everything else. 9. Rest in this awareness and allow yourself to experience the sense of spaciousness and openness that comes with it. Harding felt that by practicing this exercise regularly, you can cultivate a deeper awareness of your true nature as pure consciousness or awareness. The Zero Point in the Single Eye Douglas Harding published more than 20 books in his lifetime. As we have mentioned, his most well-known book is On Having No Head. But among the 20 books are some which look at headlessness from different perspectives. Books such as The Little Book of Life and Death and Look for Yourself, The Science and Art of Self-Realization. In his book, The Hierarchy of Heaven and Earth, Harding says that we are made of layers. What we are depends on where we are seen from. 
Therefore, we are only seen as human beings from a certain distance or perspective. If we look at ourselves at a very close range, we are not human, but cellular, molecular and atomic. And at the closest of ranges, the infinitely close, we are at our centers, nothing at all. In other words, from the zero point, in the closest possible range to see ourselves, we are nothingness. In this book, Harding also suggests that we are not looking from two eyes, but rather from a single eye. He mentions Jesus' saying that the two eyes are made one. This statement attributed to Jesus is to be found in the Gospel of Thomas, a text that is part of the Nag Hammadi Library, a collection of early Christian texts discovered in Egypt in 1945. In Christian mysticism, the two eyes can also be understood as representing the duality of the self and the world. The eye that looks outward represents the ego, with its focus on external appearances and material concerns. The eye that looks inward represents the spiritual self, with its focus on inner awareness and connection to the divine. When these two aspects of the self are made one, the individual is set to attain a state of spiritual wholeness and unity with God. Douglas Harding is making a similar claim, but a more simpler one to experience. And that is, if you look and observe very closely, you are not looking through two eyes, but actually single one, without any boundaries or limits whatsoever. The single eye is boundless openness, and an openness that is aware and can take in entire universes. This single eye is the experience of your true nature. C.S. Lewis, the British author, academic and Christian apologist who is best known for his works of fiction, including the Chronicles of Narnia series, said of Douglas Harding's The Hierarchy of Heaven and Earth that it was a work of the highest genius. On having no head and Zen Buddhism, Douglas Harding's teaching and experiments can be seen as similar to Zen Buddhism in several ways. Most importantly, they both emphasize the importance of direct experience and a shift in perception that allows one to recognize the true nature. However, there are other similarities that are important also. In Zen Buddhism and in Douglas Harding's teaching, there is a focus upon cultivating non-dual awareness an awareness that transcends the illusory separation between self and the world. In Zen, this is expressed as not to, which very closely resembles Harding's idea of experiencing the world not through two eyes, but through the single eye. Sitting meditation practice in Zen is called Zazen. The goal of this practice is to remain fully present in the moment. In Zen, one also continues this while doing such activities as eating, walking, or doing one's daily work. Harding's focus on headlessness similarly brings one's attention fully to the present moment and experiencing one's true nature directly. This focus and importance of direct experience is valued over any intellectual understanding both by Zen and Douglas Harding. All of the no-head exercises and experiments are a form of direct experience using one's own perceptions and awareness to recognize one's true and original nature. Continuous practice is also emphasized by both Zen and Harding. In Zen, practice involves the regular discipline of meditation practice as well as the study of Zen and meetings with one's teacher. Harding suggests constantly returning to this direct recognition of one's headlessness is the fastest and easiest way in which facilitates a shift in perception and recognition of one's true nature. While there are real differences between Zen Buddhism and Douglas Harding's headless way, both share a focus on cultivating direct experience, non-dual awareness, and mindfulness as a means of realizing one's true nature and transcending the limitations of the ego. On having no head and Advaita Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta is a part of Hinduism that teaches non-dualism. It also has many similarities to Douglas Harding's headless way. Non-dual awareness in Advaita Vedanta is important as it is the recognition of the underlying unity of all things. This is expressed in the headless way as headlessness and the subsequent realizing of one's true nature 
a nature not limited to the physical body, but which includes everything that appears in the clear and boundless awareness, where once we thought the head was. In Advaita Vedanta, the ultimate reality, Brahman is understood as being beyond all duality, and all apparent differences are seen as illusory. Self-inquiry is an important practice in Advaita Vedanta. Perhaps one of the most well-known questions was, who am I? Atma Vichara, suggested as a practice by the great Hindu sage and saint Ramana Maharshi. Douglas Harding's inquiry is, do I really subjectively have a head? Or is it the idea of having a head merely conceptual and objective, at the zero point, the point of pure subjectivity? It becomes obvious when I inquire that my direct subjective experience of that space where I thought and conceptualized my head as being is, in fact, nothing but open, transparent, clear awareness without bounds or limits, a space in which entire universes can appear and disappear. Going beyond headlessness This concept of headlessness, as taught by Douglas Harding, has been a powerful tool for many people in recognizing their true nature as pure awareness. However, it is important to realize that the inquiry never stops. We must not land anywhere when contemplating our true nature. We must continually deepen the inquiry. This is also suggested by Douglas Harding himself, who felt that recognizing our headlessness was merely the beginning. Once our headlessness is seen, we can deepen the inquiry by asking, seen by whom? Ultimately and paradoxically, it is seen by no one. How can I bring this about? No one seeing that there is no one. You can't. The best we can do is contemplate our headlessness again and again and again, and ask, who is it that sees this headlessness? The answer, of course, is no one sees. As it is said in Zen, enlightenment is an accident. However, practice makes us accident-prone. Keep returning to your headlessness. In praise of Douglas Harding. Douglas Harding lived into his 90s and dedicated his entire life to helping others recognize their true nature as pure awareness. Through his experiments in headlessness, he sought to guide people towards a direct experience of their own consciousness and to help them overcome the limitations of the ego and their sense of separation. Today, Harding's teachings continue to inspire and guide people around the world, offering a simple yet profound approach to spiritual realization that can be practiced by anyone. Douglas Harding's emphasis on direct experience, non-dual awareness, and the importance of returning again and again to this insight of our headlessness provides a powerful tool for those seeking to realize their true nature. Tvamee